Once again, good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is now 6.36 p.m. Dr. Rose, would you call, please? Yes. Mr. Ann Berenson? Here. Mr. Faruqi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Here. And Chairwoman Ford? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation. Under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice. <clears throat> in accordance with the provisions of chapter 231 new jersey public laws of 1975 the open public meetings act adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by giving notice to the courier news posting the agenda in the public lobby of this building 48 hours before this meeting, delivery of this notice to the Franklin Township clerk at least 48 hours prior to this meeting, and mailing notice to those persons properly requested to be mailed, notifications of meetings at least 48 hours prior to this meeting. I would just like to say right now, um, extend a warm welcome to Commissioner, I don't. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correct, Faruqi. Is that yes, correct? Ruki. Yes, Faruqi. Is there a motion to open a meeting for public comments? So move. Is there a second? A seconded. Dr. Roche, please uh, call a roll, please. Mr. Ann Berenson? Yes. Mr. Faruqi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. Okay. Seeing that there are no uh, no one from the public wants to comment. Is there a motion to close the meeting for public comments? We do motion to close the public session. Advocate here. Yeah, but I don't want to comment that. Okay, well, well said. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> My um, audio is not coming through clearly, and I can barely hear what was said. I'm sorry. I'll, I make, said a I had no I'll make a motion to close the. Uh, I'm sorry. The public session. I second. Is there a second? Second to drum. Okay. Uh, Dr. Rose. Okay, Dr. Rose, can you please call the roll? Mr. Ann Berenson? Yes. Mr. Faruqi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. <clears throat> With regard to the minutes from the last meeting, February 7th of this year, um, has everyone had a chance to read the minutes? Is there a motion to approve the minute? Motion to approve the minutes of February 7th. Is there a second?
Is there a second to approve the? I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know if I can uh, make a motion. I know I can't vote on the minutes. No, no, only those okay. that were at the meeting. So right. That leaves you, Teresa. Okay. I second it. Dr. Rose, can you please do the roll call? Yes. Mr. Ann Baronson? Yes. Mr. Faruqi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? I will abstain. Okay. I was not Noted. at the meeting. Noted. Uh, Chairwoman Ford? Yes. Okay. Chairwoman, if I may, on your working agenda, um, we do not have the auditors on there, and they are here to do their presentation. Very good. <laughs> so, I suppose now we're going to have the presentation. Is that correct? Yeah, you can do it now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, you all can hear me. Um, yes. Andy Hodgelick, and here with me this evening also is uh, Dana Montanelli. Uh, she's the uh, lead person on the audit this year. Uh, pleasure to be here with you all, you folks. And um, I will turn over the uh, meeting over to Dana to walk you through the audit, uh, hopefully briefly. And uh, any questions that after, I'll be happy to entertain it. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you. Thank you for making time for us today. Um, we did wrap up the May 31st, 2022 audit over this last month. Um, we had completed the field work earlier back in um, September. However, we were held up waiting on the pension and the um, OPEB liability numbers that we need from the state. So we just received that um, a little while ago, maybe about a month ago, and we were able to wrap everything up and finish the report. So um, we wanted to present the results of the audit tonight, and we're pleased to report that the authority did receive an unmodified opinion on their financial statements, which is the best opinion that we can give. That's a clean audit opinion, and it means that the financials are free from material misstatement. Um, I'm not sure if you received a copy of the audit ahead of the meeting. Um, I know I can't share my screen, however, I can give I, you I can a make quick you a result. Dana, do you want me to make you a presenter? Um, sure. You can present your heart out now. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Are you able to see the report? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll keep it brief. If you want to ask me any questions or stop me any at any point, feel free. Um, but these are the financial statements of the authority as of May 31st, 2022 and 2021. Um, I just want to bring attention to the fact that the authority ended with a net position this year of $64 million, 812,000. Um, unrestricted net position came in at approximately $2.4 million at the end of this year. Uh, the Most of the authority's net position is invested in capital assets. I'll go down to the, the P&L real quick. And uh, Dana, if, if I could jump in, mm -hmm. uh, just for clarity to the board, this audit is for the end of the 2022 fiscal cycle, which ended May 31st last year. Correct, Dana? Yes, May 31st, 2022. Yeah, okay. Um, and on the PL side for your 2022 results, you will see that the authority had an operating income of approximately $1.9 million. Um, 
And then there were capital contributions of 1.9 million with an overall ending net income of 3.6 million. That number looks a lot higher than it is because the authority spends um, the majority of their cash on capital improvements, all the construction and progress that's been going on. Those items don't run through your P&L, they get capitalized to your balance sheet. So it does make your operating income look a lot higher than it really is. So um, overall, the net position of the authority did increase year over year, and that's how we end it with the 64812000 that's in your net position at year end. Um, we did not have any comments or any recommendations that would have made it into the audit report. So it was overall a clean audit. And if anyone wants me to spend more time on anything, please let me know. But I figured I would just give you a brief overview. Andy, do you want to add anything else? No, oh, great job, Dana. Uh, again, just to say that the, um, the financials are in, in uh, you know strong position, and um, we had all the cooperation from management, and we appreciate uh, all the courtesies extended to us. Okay, no no comments is good news, I suppose. So, yes, good job, good job, folks. Well, congratulations to Joe and his team. Uh, thank you, uh, Scott and uh, April. Uh, they're, they're a great rate resource to me. Uh, we work pretty well together, and uh, th this is certainly 100% uh, about the team. And by the way, all the commissioners are equally members of that team. Sorry about thank that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening, Thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, Dana. You too. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bye. Uh, now for the executive summary. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, so uh, under our legal services, uh, the, the general and uh, meetings were handled. Uh, Marcy Street, uh, we do still have contractor issues. The attorneys worked on the one remaining uh, bankruptcy case, uh, which has been uh, a hearing, um, a, you know, a, a submittal of uh, bills, and the PSC and G memo of understanding regarding the Western Canal pump station phase four. Uh, the Marcy Street project uh, is still in red. We held a meeting on February 13th uh, with the contractor and our entire team. Um, we did push to get a corrective action plan from the contractor, which we did receive, that's currently being reviewed by the authority and the engineer. That within that action plan, they are asking for an extra $15,000, which I intend to decline. And we we are still receiving from time to time uh, resident complaints in the neighborhood due to the project not being completed, more specifically settling within the, uh, the trench areas of work. I just want to bring to the board's attention you know, th this is a problem between the contractor and subcontractor. Uh, the contractor fired the subcontractor and is trying to replace that sub with another company. Um, so this is uh, painfully dragging on. We're kind of in, in a pickle, but I'm I'm kind of out of patience. So between now and next month. This will either get really good or uh, could get nasty. So we're doing the best we can getting this project moved. As I think, if the contractor gave it 100%, it could be done in a month, may maybe six weeks. But uh, that's best case scenario. Hmm. Regarding the East Billstone pump station rehabilitation, it's basically completely done. Uh, there are uh, closeout items still being addressed. They're minor. 
The leak that I reported last month has not been fixed yet, but will uh, due to the weather. And we did, um, regarding the backup flow device, we did send the photo and data to the DEP as they requested. High Bay Garage uh, is actually, I, in the report it's yellow, but it really should be green. It's going, uh, going by nicely. We, last month, we did have an issue regarding the enclosed versus partially enclosed design construction of the building. The, the contractor stepped up to the plate uh, professionally, addressed those issues, and the project continued on uh, nicely. Uh, we do have one issue that we're, we do want to resize the height of the overhead doors. Uh, so that's going to be one of the things, so a change order. And we're currently looking at changing the sewer connection design uh, with, within our property here to, um, to make it better and to also save us money. So that, that uh, the report, again, uh, I have it as yellow, but it should be in green. The Somerset Street Pump Station, which is cousin to the Brookline Avenue sewer, sewer Rehabilitation Project, uh, we are still in a, a waiting pattern for NJDEP. We submitted all our documents to be reviewed and they reported back to us that there are other projects ahead of us and we haven't been reviewed yet. So we're just waiting on them. The Brookline Avenue project, uh, the contract addendum between the authority and the contractor was approved by NJDEP relative to the authorization to advertise uh, so that will be moving faster uh, in the very near future. The Wesson Canal Pump Station uh, Phase 4. Uh, we are waiting still for psc &G to sign the Memo of Understanding. We were re recently advised that the person responsible for signing those documents is away from work and they expect that to be signed upon their return. Uh, we did get another um, land appraisal that we are still reviewing and the contents of that really is, is confidential at this point. So um, I'm not gonna speak too much to that. Commerce uh, Drive pump station. So I, sent quite a number of emails to the DEP rep and the, and the supervisor. Went two and a half weeks, they would not reply to me, they would not give me a phone call. I wanted to talk to them about the flood hazard area review and study that they required. Our engineer said it might add another two, two and a half months to our project plus, you know, thousands of dollars. I finally got on the phone with the supervisor and uh, after a 47-minute conversation, basically, uh, they're not budging. We're going to have to do it. But the engineer does have, have options. Um, doesn't have to be a very in-depth study. But basically, they want us to prove that the flood hazard elevations will not reach our pump station, even though it's been there for almost 40 years. Uh, the, uh, the, the sewage authority windows and doors replacement project, uh, as, you, as I reported last month, uh, Scott Nocero detected and observed a couple of defects within the glass of the windows they installed, and we do expect them to be replacing them uh, in the near future. And it's also, as uh, reported previously, the delivery of the doors is expected uh, during the month, month of March. Uh, under general engineering, uh, the only thing to be reported really is the New Brunswick annual recon reconciliation of our uh, charges. Uh, that's in progress. Uh, the way the agreement was written, and it was written in a way that New Brunswick insisted, that that formula and their definitions have made it so we actually might be paying half what the, we expected to be paid based upon the, the, the water usage in our town. 
So that uh, that's my summary report. And uh, Chairwoman, I normally go into the executive director's report unless there's any specific questions on these projects. Are there any questions? No, okay. Uh, it's All right. So for the executive director's report, uh, under revenue, effective the uh, for the month of February, we received in checks $3,392,877.27. Year-to-date collected, $12,763,039.87. We still have an open balance due of $8,868,874.85. For uh, the month of um, February, the penalties we have uh, charged were $14,935.18, which is average. For expenses, as of January 31st, the ex expenditures was $360,142.18. Year-to-date expenditures is $7,244,175.27. I will note that that's 54% of our budget of expenditures and we're 67% through the calendar. So we are doing very well this year. Cash, our cash position as of January 31st, 2023, under unrestricted, we have $2,711,307.87. Under restricted category, we have $13,603,430.20. Under the designated column, we have $2,685,434.87, giving us a total cash position of $19,173.04. Uh, for discussion, uh, I'm going to jump ahead. So uh, Somerset County intends to grant, uh, um, give us a grant of three to three and a half million dollars. And I sent an email out uh, inviting everyone on uh, March 14th to attend the Somerset County Commissioner's meeting where they will be presenting this grant to us. This is exciting and coming at a perfect time. And we intend to apply this money to the Brookline Somerset projects. Again, that's March 14th. It's next week, a week from today at 6 p.m. at the county, county building. Uh, under the budget address, the budget process has begun. Excuse me. The budget process uh, has begun, and we're starting to put our numbers together and our documentation and work in conjunction with our financial advisor. Uh, the audit for 2022 uh, was presented tonight, and uh, we look great, if I should say that myself. Uh, the only project that is not in green, uh, as I reported previously, is the Marcy Street project, which could potentially have legal issues uh, growing. And the PSE&G, the land appraisal, we did the, the phase two of that. Uh, we did get another appraisal uh, re redone, and we're reviewing that now. Under internal uh, engineering for the month, we had 58 new connections for the month, and the tier C reviews were 11. So this has uh, been a busy season for us all. Uh, GIS, uh, just a minor error that I discovered uh, regarding the force main of the church next to the high school and the manhole, which I believe uh, CME uh, fixed or is in the process of fixing. I haven't verified it myself. Uh, under staffing strength, 
Uh, we did begin to advertise uh, the position of receptionist, uh, and we received uh, a, a number of resumes that are being reviewed uh, currently. Uh, regarding our union for the um, and the, the authority, we did send a memo of understanding to the union to modify the way we hire new people for the union positions. I do not think we got a response from the union on that yet. Um, I do expect one soon, though. Uh, personnel mentoring, uh, the foreman did complete uh, the DISC assessment. I have not reviewed it yet. Uh, but that process is uh, is underway. Uh, I already mentioned the New Brunswick Water Bill. The annual reconciliation uh, is getting uh, second review. It's been reviewed once by us, and now New Brunswick is re-reviewing it because the numbers came in so low. Uh, I already mentioned the Service County Grants Program. Okay. Uh, Standard resolutions, all the standard re resolutions will apply tonight with the exception of the North Track where there is no standard resolution. Under additional resolutions, we have two. We have one uh, that authorizes the TW TWA with the NJDEP, and another one that authorizes the agreement with BGIA, our insurance broker. Uh, regarding closed sessions, I believe we should have an executive session to discuss potential uh, litigation, uh, union negotiations, and executive director. Uh, I, at this time, uh, uh, Chairwoman, I'd like to ask uh, my maintenance manager, Scott Nacero, if he wanted to uh, go through any, anything remarkable under his monthly report. Thank you, Joe. I believe everybody has a copy of the operations report for the month of uh, February. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight is our uh, maintenance that the our staff did in-house uh, at the Six Mile Run pump station, one of our larger pump station sites. Um, in our uh, capital projects, we have an in-house uh, uh, rehab project for impellers and volutes, wear rings, and so, so forth. Uh, the three pumps were totally rebuilt at the Six Mile Run Pump Station by our own staff. Um, I don't know too many authorities that take on that type of work in-house, uh, but we have the the uh, we have the guys, we have the equipment, the know-how to want to do it, and uh, we did it in-house. We've cut the operating time of each pump at the pump stations in half, so that means the overall efficiency of the pump station, less energy costs less wear and tear on the equipment. Uh, it's gonna be a huge savings to the authority. Very proud of that project. Um, during the month, the guys flushed and cleaned over 50,000 feet, 50,740 feet exactly of gravity sewers. Um, that brings our overall goal to 97%. We also performed wet weather CCTV inspections of both main sewer line and 665 feet of sewer laterals. This is all in the north track. Uh, that the north track is one of the three crossings that go to MCUA for treatment. The north track crossing falls around the Cedar Grove Eastern Avenue area. I know Joe touched on Marcy Street. East Millstone Pump Station is, is going through its closeout pro process with CDM Smith. The high bay garage, the building looks is starting to look really uh, like a building. Uh, it's all closed in. Doors have been mounted, just waiting for the window installation and some other exterior work. Um, we had a, an, an incident in the uh, what we call our Brookline area. Uh, PSE and G drilled a uh, new utility pole through a resident sewer lateral at number nine uh, Home Street. Um, so the resident was, you know, terrified. She had no sewer service. Long story short, I contacted PSE and G's hotline. They were out there within like two hours. They removed the pole, had their emergency contractor come out and make the repair. We were on site to witness the repair. The resident was very happy. Uh, under connections for the month, we had 58 connections. Total to date is 142.8. And anticipated for this fiscal year is uh, 122. 
So we've, uh, we've overcome that number. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Scott. If uh, you guys saw, I put the photos up again of that project that he was referring to. Um, th th these are very significant uh, repairs and updates. Uh, typical authorities would just call in a, a, a for-profit corporation that would come in and do this work, but we're able, because of the, the skill set, and the experience of our crew who are very skilled they're able to disassemble all of these what, what you're looking at here this yellow thing uh that's basically the pump and the uh, the gears and so forth this particular one was taken back to our shop completely disassembled uh new parts put into it rehabilitated and then lowered back down onto this volute, uh, reinstalled and reassembled and put back into service. And uh, if you could just watch that happen, uh, I think everybody uh, would be impressed. And they saved us a lot of money doing that as well. I just want to let uh, Scott and his team know that we really appreciate what uh, you guys were able to do. I know how all these machining that uh, he was explaining to me, how they it's a very special part in the uh, with the uh, the CNC machines that they had to do the uh, parts here. Uh, really, really impressive work, and uh, especially it's not only it saved money making those parts and repairing, and it's going to save us money on the long run. That's very encouraging. Congratulations to your team, Scott. Also, great job with the uh, with a with a grant, uh, Mr. Executive Director. That's a it's a good amount of uh, grant money that we received uh, that's definitely going to help us. Unfortunately, that's a council meeting day, so I wouldn't be able to go to that um, meeting with the commissioners. Otherwise, I would have loved to go there. Thank you. Thank uh, you very Chairwoman, much. I, I forgot. Um, well, first of all, uh, Dr. Roach just reminded me uh, that uh, I believe we need a vote to accept the audit as presented. Okay. Well, is there a motion to accept the audit as presented? Motion to vote. accept. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Dr. Roche, you please um, do the roll call. All right. Uh, Mr. Ann Baronson? Yes. Mr. Faruqi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. Uh, now for committee reports, um, negotiations and personnel. Committee. Is there anything to report? Uh, the personal committee really didn't have a chance to meet, so there was nothing to report, but I have been contacted by the union uh, representative so i've given him a date uh, uh, in the second uh, second half of march a couple of dates so he will uh, get back to me commissioner schmidt and i will probably meet with them um, to, to uh, kind of listen to what they're they're thinking uh what about the municipal liaison committee Oh, um, Commissioner Francois is not here. Uh, she's out. Right. We uh, we really didn't have any anything of significance to report here from the from the uh, council meeting. And what about the construction committee? I don't believe they've met. Safety committee. There were no accidents and or injuries for the month. Okay. I'm going to move on to the consent agenda and all the items 
uh, listed below are considered to be of a routine nature, thereby requiring one motion and one second for all the items. Uh, if any member wishes to remove an item from the consent agenda, please advise me at this time uh, which resolutions need to be handled separately and they will be addressed and voted on separately. Um, regarding resolution number 0307-2023-1, payroll account, $158,136.81. Resolution number two, the operating expense account, $2,102,682.76. The renewal and replacement <clears throat> resolution, $24,593.05. And the number five, the escrow fund account, $25,609.40. Is there a motion to approve these resolutions? So moved. I believe I skipped a resolution, resolution number three, the general fund expense account, $225,641.41. Excuse me. Um, now I will call again. Is there a motion to to approve these resolutions? I make a motion to approve the resolutions. Okay. Is there? A, Dr. Roche, will you please do the roll call? Can you just um, um, confirm who was the seconder for that? Arnie. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Ann Berenson? Yes. Mr. Farugi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. With regard to additional resolutions, there will be a motion for each one. Um, resolution number six, that's resolution authorizing the authority to file treatment works approval, which is also known as TWA applications with the state of New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Division of Water Quality for various projects as needed. Is there a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make a motion to approve. The second. Seconded, Rob. Okay. Dr. Roche, please do roll call. Mr. Ann Barrington? Yes. Mr. Farugi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. Moving on to resolution number seven, the authorizing the execution of an agreement with Business and Governmental Insurance Agency Incorporated for 2023 Professional Risk Management Consulting Services. Is there a motion to approve this resolution? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Roche, please do the roll call. Mr. Ann Barrington? Yes. Mr. Farugi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. <clears throat> Is there a motion to open executive session? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Dr. Roche, please do the roll call. Mr. Ann Barrington? Yes. Mr. Farugi? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And Chairwoman Ford? Yes. Can we also note that we will be taking no action after we uh, conclude the executive session and return to normal? This way I could stop recording. Uh, Brian, Joe, is, that, is Joe, that okay? That's fine. Uh, 
Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'm not going to take any action, so you can stop recording.